Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly and I am so grateful that you are checking out my video today. I have got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Um, if you haven't seen the first video of the series, I am tackling one of my favorite subjects, which is um, planning a Disney vacation. It is actually um, a huge hobby of mine, so I do it um, really just for our family and for fun, but I often get questions um, because I am such a big Disney fanatic I guess you could say I do get a lot of questions from family and friends on Facebook and um, you know Instagram and areas like that about our Disney trips and how to plan them and what kind of you know um, what kind of things you need to consider when you are um, booking a Disney vacation so I decided um, because it is also April 2020 which means we are in the middle of the COVID-19 global pandemic and we should be at Disney World right now, but we are stuck at home like so many of you uh, and had to re, re, you know, rebook our trip. So I'm pretty homesick for Disney and feeling the Disney blues and so I thought what better way to kind of combat that than to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is Disney. So the first video, if you have not seen it, I will link it below, please check that out is um, kind of calling it like the Disney fundamentals and I took I'm taking five questions each video to kind of rehash and, and you know flesh out some of these um, most commonly asked Disney questions so the first video was around the theme of like why Disney so please check that out and then um, you know follow along here on the second video where we're going to be talking about kind of the how of Disney so I hopefully I made a good case in the first video about why you should go to Disney um, and some of the mechanics about that but now I want to talk about how do you do Disney and how do you plan for a Disney vacation so let me go ahead and just jump in I did make notes so if you see me glancing down it's just because I have a tendency to ramble and this will help keep me a little bit more focused um, and hopefully keep the video from becoming too lengthy. Um, so the first question uh, after we've asked the why of Disney is the, the how of Disney. So how far in advance do you book is the question most people ask. Um, and I think it's an excellent question because things have changed significantly in the Disney world and it used to be, you know, people's Disney trips could be a little bit more spontaneous and you could decide, you know, a couple of weeks or, you know, maybe most a couple of months in advance to do a trip. And that is not the case anymore. Um, you really need to be planning your Disney trip about a year in advance. I would caution I guess at the latest six months in advance because at the six month mark is when you can start making um, dining reservations. So that's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like the latest that I would wait and still be comfortable going because we are big foodies. We love to go out to eat. Some of the Disney restaurants that we like to go to can book up really, really far in advance. So if we don't get that, you know, six month, 180 day booking for some of the restaurants that we want to try, um, you know, let me throw out some popular ones. The um, Cinderella's Royal Table, the one, the dining you know room that's in the castle. That's a huge popular one. Uh, Be Our Guest Restaurant, that's very popular. Some of these restaurants, Beaches and Cream, which was, uh, it's at the Beach Club, is a, just like a little soda shop, but it is incredibly hard to get a reservation there. So we always plan, you know, about a year in advance, but I would say, you know, if that's too far in advance for you, if you're not that big of a planner, six months is kind of about the sweet spot when you need to be planning your trip because some of these restaurants that you are maybe saw or were hoping to get into might already be booked if you wait too much longer. There's other things you would consider at the six month mark, party tickets, like are you going for Mickey's Not So Scary? Are you gonna try to see um, the Very Merry Christmas uh, show or um, any like the villains or after hours events? All of these things you would need a you know need a hard ticket for and should be done well in advance. Any specialty like um, experiences, like I mentioned in the first video, my son got his first haircut at the Main Street Barber Shop. That's something you would want to book well in advance. Um, tours, if there's any special tours that you want to see or do, those fill up fast. So there's quite a few reasons to start planning your Disney trip um, well in advance, and so that's why I tell people like. You know it's not a great place to go and be spontaneous anymore it's a good place to go and you know put some thought into what you want and where you want to stay and what restaurants you want to eat at because some of these reservations whether it's for the lodging or for the restaurants will go quickly and you should have been planning you know for a good six months to a year in advance 
So that's the first question we get a lot. How far in advance do you book? I would say minimum of six months, probably more comfortably start planning about a year in advance. Uh, when do you go? That's another super popular question and everybody's got a, potentially everyone that goes has a favorite time of year. Uh, the three main things you should probably think about when booking a Disney trip are weather because uh, that's a huge factor in Central Florida. Is it hurricane season, which is usually in late August, September? Is it peak, peak summer, June and July and August when it just gets blazing hot and humid? Um, do you want to go to water parks and use the pools? Well, then you know you might not get great weather in January for pools. Uh, it'll be certainly uh, more temperate than some of the northern states here in the United States, but it may not be warm enough for most people to consider jumping in the pool, even though they do heat the pool. So weather is a huge impact um, on your kind of decision making. Is um, are there any of those things you kind of want to avoid? Another thing to think about is crowds. There are certainly some times of year that Disney is just busier than others, whether they have festivals going on, like Epcot's Food and Wine in the fall. October has become a primo month and it can be quite, quite crowded. Uh, you also have to consider some of the South American tourists who come in um, January. It used to be that January was a dead month, but now there's quite a bit of traffic right after the holidays. Uh, obviously the holidays is another super busy time. So if crowds are an issue and you're not wanting to fight with um, you know, this massive amount of people crowding the park, then you want to plan your trips in the what they call the off-peak seasons. Uh, Any more, surprisingly, summer has kind of become an off-peak season. It used to be the summer was full of American tourists, but I think the secret kind of got out that it was just super hot and super crowded, and so people stopped going as much. So now you can find some pockets of summer, you know, when the kids are out of school, that the, the crowds are actually pretty moderate. We like to go in the fall, uh, usually September, even though it's a gamble with hurricane season. It's still very hot, so it's still plenty warm enough to enjoy the pool and go to the water parks. Um, but school's back in session, and the you know the big push for Halloween and some of those holidays haven't really started yet. So we found a kind of a sweet spot in September. Uh, it's definitely lower point value for us to stay at Disney Vacation Club resorts in January and in September. We have done several January trips, and one time it was very warm, we were able to go to the water parks, and the next year we went, it, it was like a frost warning, and they were covering up all the flowers and the topiaries, and it was very, very cold for Central Florida. Um, and we were taking my, my son, who was 18 months, so it was almost too cold to really enjoy the parks, even as bundled up as we could be. So, it's a little bit of a gamble, but we often go in January. Um, but right now, if, if I had to choose my favorite times of year, it would be, uh, the spring right after Easter, but before school lets out, so like late April, early May, and then September. Those are our two favorite times to go. Another question we get a lot is, um, do you use a travel agent or, you know, is, it, is that something I should look into? And this one is super hard to answer because everybody's um, experiences are a little bit different. If you have a lot of Disney knowledge and you have a decent amount of time to invest and you want, maybe that's the bigger piece, you want to spend your time planning your Disney vacation, then I would definitely say it's it's easy enough and, and for me it's quite enjoyable. I love to plan. So I hardly ever use a travel agent. Now if you're on the other side of the coin and maybe this is your first or second time or your work full time and you don't need an additional hobby because planning for your Disney trip can kind of become a hobby. Um, if you're just too busy and you want someone else to take care of all the details and arrange everything for you, then obviously a, you know, a, uh, a travel agent is the way to go. There are so many great options. Most of them are free because Disney compensates the travel agents. So, you know, if, if you're kind of on the fence, it certainly couldn't hurt to talk to someone and kind of see what they can offer you that you couldn't do yourself. But as far as is it impossible to plan a Disney vacation or is it too complicated for me to plan my Disney vacation, I certainly don't think so. I quite enjoy it. I like having control over what we do and where we go and even just like checking the Disney uh, website frequently to look for availability of rooms and special deals and promos and, and things like that. I, I quite enjoy. 
we have used the Disney travel agent one time to do a cruise booking because they offered a onboard credit. So um, that is something we have had a little bit experience with. The lady was wonderful. I will try to link her below in case you're curious to look for a Disney travel agent. Um, but honestly, I'm not sure moving forward we'll keep doing it just because I like it so much. It's part of the fun for me. I love to anticipate and to plan and then to start counting down. So I get, I kind of get the fun of it twice when I plan it. The fun of planning and anticipating and looking forward to it and then the fun when we're actually there. So for me, it's like a, a twofer when I plan our own trips. So that's my take on it. But certainly if you don't feel, um, as confident or you would certain or you don't have the time i would highly recommend a travel agent um the fourth question is how many days do you stay and that's another one that so depends on your family and of course your vacation availability and you know schedule um i honestly think six days is kind of like a minimum because there are four four parks and two water parks and Disney Springs and that's all just on the Disney property that's not including Universal which has two parks or SeaWorld or Legoland or the beach or the Kennedy Center there is so much to do in Central Florida so I think sweet the sweet spot again is about six days for us we usually arrive on a Sunday and depart on a Saturday that gives us a Saturday at the front end to do our traveling if we're driving and then a Sunday at the end of our trip to again return home. So it kind of works out pretty good for us. It allows us to do a build in a rest day in the middle of our trip because park days can be quite long and exhausting. It's a lot of walking. A uh, final question, how do you plan? Like what resources do I use? What you know, websites and things do I recommend? I've got such a long list. Everyone that I can, I will link below. Um, the first one I would recommend just for pricing your tickets is Undercover Tourist blog um, or what website, excuse me, Under Taurus, Undercover Tourist of the website. You can get very good prices on tickets by using them and they also have a crowd calendar so you can kind of keep an eye on what the peak you know, times of year might be. Another one we recommend is the Disney Food blog. They have a website, but they also have a great YouTube channel and they give you all the great details on what restaurants to go to and what foods to try and the festivals, um, whether you're going for food or wine or flower and garden, they have all the information about the booths. Plus they just have an incredible like drool worthy Instagram feed. So definitely check out Disney food blog. We really like Tim Tracker. I've been a fan of his for a couple years and he's a great, a, has a great YouTube channel, posts daily videos and when um, the coronavirus is not raging through Florida, he's in the theme parks almost every day and giving great cont content and great tips on anything new and uh, ride updates and you know building updates and things like that. So Tim Trucker and his wife Jen have an awesome channel, so check them out. Um, Touring Plans, it's a more a subscription service, but they also have just phenomenal crowd calendars. So Touring Plans can actually give you a breakdown of you know exactly how to move through the park so if you choose like Magic Kingdom for example and you want to know what ride to go in first when to arrive what to do afterwards they can give you it seems like a minute by minute breakdown of how to best execute a park day at any particular park how to avoid waits and long lines uh, what attractions to see at what times so the touring plans quite quite detailed and like i said i do believe there is a fee to subscribe to their website but some really really great content from tour touring plans obviously the disney app my disney experience is very useful you can do all of your um, dining reservations on there you can do all of your fast passes when your fast pass window becomes available it's just got a lot of good content. It has links to all the menus. So if you're kind of trying to decide what restaurant you want to see, you can look at, you know, details about the restaurant and then go link from the My Disney Experience to their to their menus. So just great, great, great information on that app. Plus when you're in the park, you will definitely, definitely, definitely want to have that on your phone already. It will save you a lot of time. You can check wait times on rides, 
via your phone. You can update your dining reservations. You can find new fast passes. They now have interactive queues. So when you're going through the lines, your phone has a, a Disney Play that allows you to kind of interact and do fun games while you're in line. So super, super great app, um, constantly being updated and revamped and certainly something you would not want to go on a Disney vacation without having on your device. And the final one we we look at a lot and I like a lot is the Disney Tourist blog. Uh, Tom is the author of it and his wife, I think her name is Sarah. They have been long, long, long term Disney fans. They have stayed in every Disney resort, gone to every Disney park, I believe, and have detailed trip reports, detailed reviews on dining, detailed reviews on um the resorts i think the final one i'll give a shout out to i forgot to wrote, write this one down but it's living by disney and she's pretty much exclusively on instagram but she does have a weekly email blast that goes out with all sorts of details and sneak peeks and information about disney world she's a disney local um her name is serena and um i really enjoy her that is going to do it for our questions with the disney fundamentals today that is the how of Disney. So we've answered now the why of Disney and the how of Disney. Um, to kind of flesh this out a little bit better for you, I wanted to take a, a few minutes here at the tail end of my video to talk about our next trip and the things that I'm considering when I'm as I've been planning this trip now for quite a while. We have had this trip planned, my sister and I. She's got a family of six and we have a family of four. So we're a party of 10 and we have had this booked for a full, come September, it'll be a full year. So as I said earlier, I took my own advice. We've planned it now for a full year. We got a very good deal on a Verbo rental through the Wyndham Bonnet Creek Resort. They also have a timeshare part. And so we were able to rent someone's timeshare. It is adjacent to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort. So it is on Disney property. And we got a great deal booking that far in advance. Um, again, being a big party and wanting to stay together uh, in one unit, we knew we would need to kind of do our you know, due diligence and do our research and book well in advance. So that's where we'll be staying. I'm quite excited to stay there um, because we have very different age ranges. Her kids are teenagers and mine are toddlers. We've had a few difficulties just with trying to plan what we'll do. So we will definitely be splitting up some and letting the older kids go and explore and do all the thrill rides and the adults and potentially the toddlers will just kind of pal around and do quieter rides and quieter things. Maybe do some more dining reservations and some uh, take a much slower pace. We plan to go to Homecoming. It's one of our favorite restaurants. It's on Disney Springs. Um, the Disney Springs area and it is by Chef Art Smith and has really just like incredibly excellent southern comfort food. So we're talking fried green tomatoes, we're talking hush puppies and buttermilk fried chicken and to die for mashed potatoes. So it's really good food. We've gone there just twice now and now it's like we there's so many things to try and do in Disney. You hate to repeat, but we could not go to Disney World and not go to Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. Highly recommend it. So we're going to do that. We have reservations um, for the whole 10 of us to do Beaches and Cream, which is a small soda shop that was recently remodeled on the beaches, uh, the Beach Club Disney Resort property. We're also going to be going to out um, out to eat together at the Liberty Tree Tavern in Magic Kingdom. That can be a little trickier to to get as well. Again, because we're a large party, we're finding pretty much everything tricky to do. So um, we've got all these reservations. My sister and her husband and my husband and I will be doing one double date night. We're going to be going to Paddlefish, which is the beautiful uh, riverboat restaurant there in Disney Springs, and I've never been to that, so quite excited. As far as our kiddos, this will be their first time back since Sawyer was two and a half and Vivi was five months. So they have been looking forward to this trip for quite a while. We've been uh, watching videos with them. Some of the things they talk most about going to do, of course, is Dumbo. My son seems to remember that ride. Also seems to remember it's a small world and I think uh, my daughter Vivian now will be all about the, the dancing, singing dolls. So. Small World, uh, Dumbo, and then surprisingly they're both into rocket ships and space 
and so I checked the height requirement for Astro Orbiter and I think they're both going to be able to ride Astro Orbiter. So we'll be trying, giving that a try and seeing if they like riding in little rocket ships. Uh, Vivian is tall for her age, so I think they're both going to be able to ride their first roller coaster, which will probably be a barnstormer over um, in the Magic Kingdom. Potentially my son will be old enough to ride Slinky Dog. And that's something we have actually not been able to go and do is Toy Story, even though it's been open now for a couple of years. So very, very excited to see all of Toy Story land. Um, we are Star Wars fans, but we're not like diehard Star Wars fans. And certainly our, my kids are not into it because of their age. So we will, we will walk through, we will do what we can do, but we will not probably kill ourselves to get uh, Rise of the Resistance or even the Millennium Falcon. I think our focus at Hollywood Studios will probably be on the new Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad. Runaway Railroad. Gosh, that's a lot of R's. And then uh, the Toy Story Land for sure. Epcot will be there during Food and Wine. My husband and I have gone during that time before and thought it was just beautiful, but we didn't really take the time to go through the booths. We ended up having a reservation at via Napoli and eating a lot of delicious pizza and not feeling hungry enough to do any of the booths. So this time around, we definitely hope to do some booths and try some of the different foods. Um, my brother-in-law is from Colorado, which they're famous for their, uh, you know, microbrews and their local breweries. So he's really excited to do some of the drinking around the world and try some of the different um, authentic beers from different regions. So my husband and my brother-in-law will probably do that. Um, and what else? Oh, Animal Kingdom, one of our favorite parks. My husband is actually a veterinarian and loves animals, and so do obviously my kids. Um, so we'll take great, great, great advantage of our Animal Kingdom day. A lot to look forward to. Uh, it's been fun planning it. It's been in the works, like I said, for almost a full um, year. So we've done the reservation itself. We've already bought our tickets. My husband and I treated ourselves as our Christmas gift to annual Disney passes this year. So we're super excited to be able to just come and go as we like and not feel, you know, not feel like we have to stay from sunup to sundown to get our money's worth. We have several trips planned um, in the next calendar year to, to make good use of our annual passes. So it seemed, um, it seemed like the right thing to do budget wise and also just to give us the flexibility when we're on these trips to not run ourselves and the kids into the ground trying to squeeze everything into one day. So if you have any questions about our trips or about you know the, the how of Disney, how to plan your trip, please put those comments below. I will definitely read them all and would love to respond. If I get enough of one particular question, then I will add that question to a future video series. Um, as I said, we've done the, the why Disney, now we've done the how Disney, and I think the next time we will probably tackle a, maybe a kid-related Disney uh, series because I do get a lot of questions about, you know, how to do Disney with kiddos. And so maybe I'll take five very popular questions and hash those out next time. And then moving forward, we'll probably do each uh, park will get its own series and we'll do some questions that specifically about the Magic Kingdom and then you know f go through the list of the other parks and so I've been so appreciative for you taking the time to watch this video I would love it I'm a relatively new channel so if you could take a moment to subscribe so you can be notified when new content come becomes available I am going to be trying to release videos every week Thanks again for the time. It was lovely to chat with you. Leave me a comment and like and subscribe when you can. We will talk soon. Bye-bye.